there was so we went through phases when we first started naughty gym you know we were like oh god i hope nobody we got to do everything we can to protect our identity and yeah uh, you know this it's going to be awful if people find out and then the longer we were in it we started taking some pride in what we were building and we're like well you know somebody's going to find out eventually and we got a little looser with our standards of what we posted for pictures and then you know sure enough uh, we were on a, another podcast year and a half or so ago and and uh, that podcast for whatever, we've probably been on a dozen podcasts over the last sure. few years. Okay, That one, for some reason, got circulated in our community. We don't know how. And uh, mm -hmm. we were outed and then everything, our entire lives just kind of fell apart for a period of time there. Uh, but now, of course, I would never go back to having to hide. Welcome, fellow Lushes. Come on in, pull up a bar stool, and enjoy some cocktails with dimples and the beard. It's gonna turn the tavern. All on. right, open the tavern and let's get going. Drinking some vodka, vodka. Yeah. So, speaking of vodka, let's be the first ones to reach out <laughs> to the two bears. Two bears. Look at this shit. We'll break up with Tito's for you. Just like you did, Bert. Yeah, we'll break up with You'll Tito's. Say it. We'll put your bottle on our table. Tito's again again. We get some hot, hot ladies on here. So we will we will we break, make, we, will break and, we will break with Tito's. And we dress up like you guys for Halloween. Go check it out. And you won't check it out, but we look pretty damn good. Anyway, we'll be your brand ambassadors. All right, let's start this episode. We look pretty damn good. Welcome on back to another episode of Cocktails with Dimples in the Beard. And this time we got a hot dude with a <laughs> hot dude with a hog. Yeah. Yep. Well, well we're gonna find out. Controversy we're, we're reigns. Gonna, we're, gonna, uh, we're gonna ask some serious questions. We're gonna get down down and dirty today. We're not we're not messing around. But if you go to the naughty gym show <laughs> on YouTube and you look at the thumbnail for episode 14. It's allegedly him. You'll know what we're talking about. Ladies, by ladies. The, by the end of the show, you'll we'll I think not by the end. Pretty quick. Ladies, do not click off. This one's for you. Okay? This one's for you. I know we bring a lot of hot ladies on. In fact, we've had this man's wife on the show. Hot wife. Go back a week. You'll see her. Um, not just for the ladies either. It's not. It's not. Not with what we're going to talk about this week. I'm going to move my mail. That looks horrible. Oh, was that in the picture? God damn fucking amateur. Sorry about that, Bert and Tom. We'll do that over. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm like, what the hell? Oh, poor Osos. I bet they end up making a whiskey at some point, too. Yeah. I mean, not because they're a big thing, but yeah, they should. Yeah. Well, I, I think we'll see how it goes. It's It sounded like they thought about tequila at first, but there's so many big names in the tequila market. They're like, maybe maybe vodka's where it's Every, at. Everybody's got a booze. Yeah. When are we going to make ours? I don't know. Anybody out any any uh, I just, think vodka's the quickest to make. I don't know. But any distilleries out there Remember the vodka distillery. distillery went to up north and they had vodka and they were working on because you gotta let it whiskey sit longer. Oh yeah, yeah. Longer. Whiskey you do have to yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I don't know about tequila. I don't know what the process is, is for tequila, but I don't think that's uh as quick or as I, long. I think that uh <laughs> Maybe we maybe we make gin. Tequila can go nobody bad. nobody makes a gin. Yeah. Oh well, yeah, somebody makes a gin. Well, people do, but yeah. Um, Ryan Reynolds. Oh. Gay boy. What? What? Is it? Did I? Beep. Jesus, we start offending right away. <laughs> he's and he's got a sense of humor. That's not about a sense of humor. Be a little woke. Just kidding. We don't do woke. He's delicious looking. You think Ryan Reynolds is hot? Fuck yeah. Yeah, not big head, but that's all right. He has a like ego wise, or his head physically is big. Physically, okay, not ego. Well, you know what they say about guys with big heads? They have big heads. They wear big hats. I have a fucking seven and five ace on right, seven and three quarters. Whoa, that's a big old that's fitted. Big I wish that. I wish this head size correlated to this <laughs> head size. But if you want to know about this head size, go look for the poem on our Instagram. It's there. I was uh, I'm not, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call Annie out right now. I hope she watches this because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I got to say, I loved the poem. Yeah. Yeah. But I was a little shocked when she talked about me having little nuts. I was like, what? I have little nuts. I had to get a, I had to get a home check. 
Yeah, and I have little nuts. Oh yeah. Apparently, I have little nuts. About others agree, like like comparative to others, you have little nuts. I guess, yeah. Okay, well, yeah. Well, Maybe I mean, that's why it took me so long to make a baby. My nuts are too small. It took all they, yeah, they were working, yeah, working overtime. All right. So, well, I mean, so I'm not gonna say she was wrong. I'm just gonna say we... it shook me a little bit until I watched the video of her doing it because did that... it really hit you. Well, she made it seem cute that they were little, not like when I first heard yeah, it, yeah. I was like, a little nuts. <laughs> but then I watched her. But she said it. Yeah. Then I watched her perform and she made it sound like nice and little where I can get them in my mouth. She, 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 she was very, very cute and sassy about it. Yeah. Yeah. She does a good job. We have to, we will have to read the poems. Hopefully. Right. Did you like what? What? Yeah, read each other's poems. Now that, I mean, now that I've heard yours. Yeah, it's still. I, I thought it'd be funny to read each other's. Well, you shouldn't have watched. I didn't pay attention. You got to watch all our content. That's the way it works. So hopefully, uh, she'll be sending me one. Come on. Oh, oh. I, I mean, I got the poem. Oh. PDF. She'll send one. We'll Just get one. Good. Take some time. I just put out there. We'll see what. But you already have your the PDF of your poem. You know what it says. I do, yes. Okay, all right. Yep, I got it already. Oof. I'm a little nervous. Because like, well, you're gonna call me big nuts. Big, <laughs> big nuts McGee. <laughs> <laughs> would you be upset if she told me I had big nuts? That it would suck so bad if the whole poem, your whole since she did it second, was just comparing and telling me how much better yours was. <laughs> <laughs> They're telling it's like either one. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh fuck. Yeah. It would have been fun to to not have you have heard mine until because then when we read each other's to see the reaction. It was. was I, I, I to be honest, I was at work, so I didn't really listen. Good. Don't I, don't listen. Don't I was there like reading along. I'm like, I'm not gonna talk. Yeah, don't listen. So yeah. But what a what a clever what a clever thing. It'll be out. What a clever thing. Rick, well trick poems. Yeah, we'll read them on the next one. Um well, I was gonna say we we'll have to a good introduction to have it before a guest yeah we'll figure it out somebody's well we could wait save them until annie comes back because she's going to come back for her memoirs too sure so we don't wait that long i think her memoirs are coming on a couple months we want to get that out there well mine's out there my my, my, cock, my, my cock is always out there buddy just out there slaying around town if you know what i mean okay um yeah so i mean hopefully she's out. she will I have faith. I do too. I have I have faith too. She just you just jump. Jumped and over. I'm gonna say it, yeah. and I'm gonna which, cause fucking controversy. Which I love it, and I don't care because I think it'll be funny. Go. Cool. Sometimes you need to have an opinion, and if your opinion offends people, f too bad. True. I want to say on if we had a top five list of guests of guests oh boy. to this point, I don't do it. Annie don't, Temple would be on uh, that list, <laughs> very near the top. Okay. And I have not said that publicly about any one guest yet but i thought annie was delightful 100 and everybody Way else offend sucks. everybody else yeah. wow well, 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 that's not I, what i said I, I thought you were all delightful that's well you know what that's because you have no fucking balls to have an opinion well you don't we've been told you got tiny balls not, well i'm proving i don't huge rocks baby i wouldn't uh annie i'm sending you a second picture where they're <laughs> Maybe I'm like having you... a small ball day. <laughs> we all have small ball days. Do we? I think so. Don't you? Don't you have days? Well, I mean, there is shrinkage. But, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, all right. I was having about, a small ball this? moment. Let me kick in the nuts, get them swelled up, and then you can send her a picture. No, nah, I'm going to stick with the small balls. I still got a. Oh, I don't want to tell you what I got rated. I got a good rating. No, I don't want to hear Good rating. Don't want to don't go to the ratings. Talked about we'll talk about the ratings. We we'll read the poems. Okay. Is everybody confused by now? Why? The word. They've watched the Annie episode. They've seen the clips on Instagram. They know what we're talking about. Done. All right. All right. Good I good. mean, if they're true fans, they've seen all this content. All right. Yeah. And if they're not true fans, they're about to become true fans because we're talking about some dick poems some woman sent us. All right. Who doesn't want to hear a good dick poem? How did we get those dick poems? Go watch Annie Temple's episode. She doesn't just randomly write a poem about your dick without she also seeing it. Oh, yeah. We had to write. It's not like we just said, 
who I, stood up and said, right, here's my wait, I, region. I drew a picture. What did you do? I took a video. I took 12 pictures. Wait, no, I'm serious. How many, how many pictures did you send her? How many yeah, she's like, stop. How many pictures did you he actually send? How many pictures do you actually send her? I sent two. Me too. Okay. I got a couple angles. I said that's what I said. Yeah. One said I'm not sure which angle's best, so I gave you gave yeah. her two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, she must have been so delighted. <laughs> oh and yeah, you still got them for the years. Do what you want with them. Anyway. Well, not just saying, not whatever you want with them. Well, I mean, personally wise. Yeah, personally, home wise, do, do whatever what you, you want. want. I, I mean, I know. If, I don't mind if you're gonna put them on the internet. At and least I give and credit. Quite frankly, I understand. If I got a picture of my dick, I, I would, I would use it as well. Well, you got a picture of mine. What'd you do with that? <laughs> that fucker is fast. Oh, oh shit! Delete, delete, delete. It was funny though. I went to work the next day. I'm like, oh, gotta get rid of these. Gotta get rid of these in case I open my phone at work. <laughs> these? There was more than one. Well, I didn't just like one, two send. I mean, I. Not saying there's a bad picture, but I. <laughs> we were still talking about the picture. Took more than one. I took more than two. I was still talking about the picture of my cock that got sent to you. On. I moved on. I moved on. Yours, no. Uh, whatever. I bet you get no response to that. <laughs> He can. Uh, he has my permission. Anybody, anybody wants that picture. Well, let's ask me again in, in six months and I'll be like, all right, anybody, anybody, anybody. I'm just going to send it just to say <laughs> somebody. Do you like sending dick pics normally? Um, <laughs> um, it, it all depends. I, I don't, I don't just send them randomly to people. Oh, me neither. <laughs> Remember that one time? That one time in band camp? No, I remember that one time when I was on the dating app and I sent my cock to a um a black woman and I failed to realize that I probably wasn't impressing and she never talked to me again. <laughs> I knew I knew. we're having a great conversation. We're getting along, texted back and forth every other minute. This is going great. Send her a dick pic. <laughs> I may I may have misinterpreted the conversation. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> uh, my well, bad. I mean, I don't know that you <laughs> my bad. I don't know if you misunderstood misunderstood the conversation, which direction it was going. I think it was more of the why am I bothering? <laughs> Well, I like to assume that she just would have been offended by any dick pic, and it had oh, nothing to do with my no. particular dick. She's but... like, she's like, I can't work with those small nuts. Uh, I'm never gonna live it down, Annie. I don't. I, I, I just. I hope you understand what you did. There better be something in his fucking poem that I can use. There better be something. All right. I don't fucking rewrite it if you have. Uh, I need something. It's not fair. Uh, oh, that's so good though. So good. Um, <laughs> have you have you ever read it? Has so, anyone ever asked you for one and you haven't sent it? No. no. <laughs> Stop quite. There, I sent one to you. I why, said, why? I, you said to people, "It's like, can you send me that?" And you're like, "Click, click, click, click." Oh, oh, I just have them in the. I have them in the bank. I can. It's like you let the video they're asking for, like a semi-automatic machine gun. I just hit a button. They're like, "Fuck!" I got them from. I yeah, I have like 360 pictures of my dick, every angle, every angle, 360 degrees. Nice, yeah. And every one of them, I got little nuts. You include the nuts, little nuts, most of the time. No, not normally. I mean. They're so little that if I take like the top, you know what I mean? If I take this view, you're not going to see my nuts are so little. I got to get under there and show the undercarriage. You could lay them on your legs. They would, st up. they would still look small. 
Um, I saw so, anybody. No, no, no. I'm, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because now I'm where Annie, we're just having fun. I, I didn't really take offense to the little mutts comment, but please give me something to work with. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's what we do. We oh, nuts. I think, yeah, I don't think. Where are they going with this? Little nuts. Little nuts. We need to, we need to, we need to have someone write you a song. What about a place that we can, we can send in, they write you a song. About having little nuts? Yeah. Who, but who? Oh, Dave uh, Williamson. Remember he had a song written? Oh, for Forrest. For Forrest. And then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it was, I don't remember if he paid 100, 200, 300, 400. It kept going up. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the price kept going up. But um, life, it was only a 150 and then it was too bad. Anyway, something like that. Yeah. I'm sure you could Google it and find the place. But where was I going with this? I don't Ladies, know. here's a serious question. This is going to, we're going to get serious. We are? Yeah. Why? And comment, please, when you, when you have to you listen to this. A lot of ladies watch. When so. you ask for a dick pic, do you want nuts in the picture? Oh. Do you want it from the side? The, what, what's the preference? What is it? Yeah. What um, makes for a good dick pic? Right. Right. In your opinion. And I'm like everything, I'm sure each, Lady has a different. Sorry, I'm I'm trying to get something. I'm uh, not ignoring you. No, you're fine. Um, I I am curious what makes a good different. Yeah, pick. and I'm sure there's people are gonna have different answers, but um, up until then, what? Yeah, what 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 would you ask for? Um, do you save them? Do you? Question two. Have you ever got? Do you save them? Do you delete them? Do you save them until you're like, I don't talk to this guy anymore? Then you delete them. Do you send them? Do you share number three? Do you share them with your friends? Oh boy. That's a violation. That's like fucking that's that's against the law. Well, there was a there was a girl that I hadn't talked to her for a while and all of a sudden kind of randomly. Hey, how's it going? Oh, hi, good. How you been? Hey, send me a dick pic. And I went, wait a minute. It, what? <laughs> wait, um, just that quick. She was just like, it was kind of and, and it was funny because I remember I, I just was like, where, where are you right now? So I met a somewhere. She was out. And I'm like, so you're out with friends. <laughs> so why did she want your dick pic? Wanted to show it off. Had she fucked it? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, good for you. Sorry, it's why it got to be. So you're just sitting around and everybody's comparing dick pics or so what's did going you on? One? I said, um, no, I, I don't remember if I did or didn't. Wow. I got to think about it for a second. After I didn't right away, and I kind of said no, and then it was like I promise I won't share. I'm like, well, don't, like, well not the point. If you're if the if the sole purpose of you asking for one is so you could show it around. Oh, you have fucking standards. Compare, then I don't care. But don't just. <laughs> you have standards all of a just sudden. Don't say no, and then show it. Don't That's lie to standard. me. Don't lie to me. I was like the. Sometimes I like to write a smiley face on my head and take a picture of it. Yeah, I go cue ball. So. <laughs> all right, let's go. Are we ready to go? We do not. Not well, until they subscribe, like, comment. We don't rate. Not. Yes. Wait, why didn't I say that already? You didn't. I said leave a comment. Well, specifically kind of. about that. But in the meantime, yeah. do do like and subscribe. And it comment. helps. We do like the comments. We really do enjoy the comments um, about the dicks and without the dicks. Either way, we appreciate it. Now it's enough. I want to keep a pretty man waiting. No, we don't call men pretty. I, Handsome, I, sexy. I chose pretty. I don't like it. No. Too bad. All right, well, without further ado, Scott Shirley. Pretty man. Well, thank you for joining us, Scott. We appreciate it. No problem. I'm excited. Yeah, we... Uh, and, what are you doing right there? And I'm pouring my vodka, so... Oh, my goodness. So, I read your message. Tito. Excellent. All right. <laughs> so... Are you sipping that, or are you just... Doing uh, yeah, shit? well, so I hate all alcohol. I just like the buzz from it. <laughs> And so, I, I, you know, I don't like drinking. Uh, I've never actually even tasted a beer. Not once ever in my life. All right. Oh, wow. uh, and I don't like sipping anything because I hate the taste of it. So I'll just take shots, wash it down with a Diet Dr. Pepper, and, you know, I'm good to go for the rest of the night. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> That's perfect. I like it. Well, you find what works for you. That's right. <laughs> I'm surprised it's not tequila considering, you know, all the weightlifting and the, and the working out and stuff. Isn't tequila supposed to be better for you when it comes to that the healthiest yeah oh i don't know i've never heard that and i hate it with a passion i would oh it's awful <laughs> i don't love it i don't love vodka but it, i hate it less than i hate tequila sure, sure. okay yeah. Yeah. now, now tequila is april's drink of choice okay yeah 
makes but makes the girl's clothes come off, right? And that the, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Well, it doesn't it doesn't take much for her. She that could, <laughs> like a big glass of water with some bubbles <laughs> in it or something. <sighs> we're gonna we're gonna start there, huh? Already, you got us pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, well, we weren't gonna shot, but I but I brought a shot glass, and if you do a shot at some point, I will do one with you. Oh, I'm ready now. Oh, ready. okay. Well, let's let's, have, have fun, fellas. Let's go now because I'm gonna sip some whiskey. Because right. I enjoy, but here, buddy. Oh, it's awful. All right, <laughs> I'm ready now, though. <laughs> that that loosens the wheels a little bit. Gets but here's the good. Here's the good part of this. I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing on this show or what we're talking about. So I'm excited. <laughs> well, well, we're gonna we'll figure it out as we go. How's that? <laughs> yeah. Let's start from the beginning. We like I said, we talked to your wife. Yeah. Her episode will probably have been like out a week ago. Um. When we talked to her, she told us about your event and hedonism and uh, and the naughty gym and all that kind of stuff. Um, you guys do a podcast. I tuned into the podcast and saw an episode and thought, this guy's great. I'd love to talk to him. So, oh, well, good. Yeah. So, so which, ep- which episode did you listen to? The, f- the first one I started with, I mean, how could you? I'm, we, the controversy starts right here. I watched okay. episode 14 first about male bisexuality. Oh, okay. And. <laughs> The controversy being the thumbnail photo to that is that actually 13. because is it 13? 13. Damn it. Yeah, I, I couldn't correct you. I have no idea what any of our episodes are. All right, well. <laughs> well, there's a reason I'm correcting because if anybody wants to go look on 13, the thumbnail on it. Why didn't you tell me that before? We were just looking at it. You son of a bitch. You left me hanging in the weeds. You told me it was 13. Oh, I did. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> the thumbnail is a photo of. You well possibly oh, yeah, yeah. Thumb your lady. heads down and you're yeah, so, uh, we have so tight that, whiteies. Yeah, that picture was taken before we were public, and that's why my head is down. We were okay. trying to figure out ways we could take pictures that we could post, but that wouldn't give away our, our our identity. So that's what that picture picture was. Yeah, and it's probably the most uh flattering but not realistic picture of me <laughs> that could ever be taken. <laughs> Well, so let's I go use back to that. So I use are, it all the time. Wait, I, I and I would if you. So one hundred percent, you are saying it is you. Yes, yeah, it's definitely me. Well, I mean, they, before well, we get going, well, cheers to you, sir. Yeah, cheers to you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Before we get going, I don't know if you know this, but tattoos kind of give you away. You can have your head down, people. Still- <laughs> yeah, I know. I didn't, but there was. So we went through phases when we first started Naughty Gym. You know, we were like, "Oh God, I hope nobody." We got to do everything we can to protect our identity, and yeah, uh, you know, this it's going to be awful if people find out. And then the longer we were in it, we started taking some pride in what we were building. And we're like, well, you know, somebody's going to find out eventually. And we got a little looser with our standards of what we posted for pictures. And then, you know, sure enough, uh, we were on a, n- another podcast a year and a half or so ago. And and uh, that podcast for whatever, we've probably been on a dozen podcasts over the last sure. few years. Okay, That one, for some reason, got circulated in our community. We don't know how. And uh, mm. we were outed. And then everything, our entire lives just kind of fell apart for a period of time there. Uh, but now, of course, I would never go back to having to hide. Right. I get to be who I am. Um, we don't have to worry. Everybody knows everything in our town now. So it it's acted as a great filter. There's the people that hate us because of who we are. And there's the people that uh, tolerate us. And then there's the people that love us because of who we are. And yeah. we know who's who. And, and so it's been a blessing in disguise. Yeah, so, absolutely. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the people that love you outweigh the people that hate you by a lot. Well, they certainly outweigh their influence. But, uh, you know, the people that don't like us, we don't give two shits anymore. Yeah, Amen. Right? Amen. Amen. As you, you know, we're out. Uh, I, I think I was a bit surprised at how many people have supported us given the culture that we live in in Alabama. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, it, not only did most of our friends hang around, but we get messages all the time from people who are interested in some version of non-monogamy or going to a nudist resort or something outside the, you know, the confines of heteronormativity. Right. And uh, people that we would never expect to message us and message us, Hey, please keep this quiet. I don't want anybody <laughs> to know, but I have some questions. And, yeah. and we, we always try to be super helpful and understanding because, you know, we used to be in their shoes too. And it's, you don't know where to turn. And, yeah. 
Just mm-hmm. need somebody. The, a lot of these people just need an outlet. They just yeah. hey, someone else is is doing it, and right. it's okay. I, yeah. I'm not the only one. Yeah. So it's it's a it's a it's a huge relief to a lot of people. But before we move on from that picture, I just kind of like to <laughs> talk <laughs> the process that when you said you took pictures, so you obviously intentionally poured water down your <laughs> pants. Well, no, no, no. I had just so been in the, the ocean. Process, what? I had, we had just been in the ocean, so we were soaking wet. Uh, oh, I thought, I thought he was going to, no, I just worked out at sweat, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to get it to how strategic you were like, no, 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 it's drying up. I got to pour some more on before we take the picture. <laughs> yeah, no. So, you know, for guys, um, well, I don't know if you guys are the same way or not, but <laughs> when I look at a picture of myself, that's a revealing picture. I'm not looking at my body. I'm not looking at my face or my facial expression. I'm like, how does the junk look? Yeah, yeah. Yep. You're yep. because she, she actually posted a picture of me without asking once. I think she put it on Twitter after. No, no, no. It wasn't on Twitter. I think it was in our naughty gym community because she wouldn't have put a naked picture of me on Twitter. <laughs> um, but it was a naked picture that she put in our uh, naughty gym community, which is it's okay to do it there. Yeah, mm. we had just had sex, and I was exhausted. And I was like laid back on the bed, like on you know, yeah. I, I was wiped out. Yeah, the pose that I was in actually looked pretty good when she took the picture, but my stuff looked like a baby's junk. <laughs> now she was like, "I'm gonna post this picture. You look so hot, you know, laying there like that." And I'm like, "I don't care." If I looked like Thor off the Marvel movies, <laughs> right? right? I look like I have a half inch penis. You got to get you got to get that off of there. And uh, it's really so, nice. yeah, because it was tired. It it was sleeping. Right. Yeah, Give me a minute. It, yeah, it had done its job and it was ready to, <laughs> to rest. But yeah, so that picture that you're talking about on the thumbnail, that video, is uh, you know, I was happy with the way that. Well, to, to be to be fair, since since you didn't show your face and you uh, Ted like. Um, I've started to use it myself. So you know, <laughs> feel free. You have, uh, yeah, there's no, uh, there's no trademark on that. Send it to my you. wife, send it to my wife. And she's like, wait, that's it. Wait, wait, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's my profile picture on date, every dating app. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so so how, uh, all right. Are you done talking about the guy's junk right now? I am. Can we move on? I, we can. <laughs> We'll come back to it. <laughs> um, so, so the naughty gym. So prior to that, how do we get to the naughty gym? You obviously didn't jump right into the naughty gym just to get in. You had other endeavors with your fitness and how, how where did your love for fitness start? Uh, well, I've been, you know, growing up, I was into all sports uh, other than football. I was very small, you know, I'm, I'm five ten, So I wasn't super, sh- super short. Yeah. But I was 120 pounds, you know, when I was a senior in high school. So I never played football. But other than that, I played every sport. And um, so I've always had this passion for playing. And it's why it's part of the reason why our tagline for Naughty Gym is never stop playing. It has a double meaning. You know, it's we sure. believe in a playing, you know, as a way of, you know, exercise and keeping yourself young. But also that's the term people tend to use in consensual non-monogamy when they're having sex with other people as we're playing. But sure. Um, so I've always had that aspect of my life involved in sports. I was a collegiate tennis player, went on to be a teaching pro for a few years and then found, um, CrossFit. Okay. Eventually. And we, I opened first CrossFit gym in our hometown, uh, April and I eventually we ended up opening two others. So we had three total, uh, but we had two by the time COVID hit, I'd sold the first one and then we opened two between the two of us. Okay. When COVID hit and we were forced into quarantine for a couple of months in Alabama, which I know was longer for most states, but Alabama's super uh, redneck, so we didn't close for very long. <laughs> nice. uh, we uh, we realized that we had to we shut our gyms down, loaned out all our equipment, or kind of checked our equipment out to our members, like library books, and wrote down what they had, and we just started writing workouts for them based off the equipment they had, and we had to. Oh wow. We had to buy some software and stuff to to make that efficient. And we learned how to coach people remotely. When the quarantine was over or coming or almost over, we realized we didn't want to go back to our separate lives. I used to run one of the gyms. She ran the other. We didn't see each other until nighttime. And we didn't want to go back to that. So we sold the gym that I was running to run the one that she had. Okay. Again. Okay. But 
in order to try to replace our income, we wanted to kind of keep on this remote coaching thing, but we didn't, nobody knew who we were. We didn't have a name to leverage. So we knew we needed a niche. And since we had been ourselves exploring consensual non-monogamy, we thought, well, you know, if any group wants to look their best when their clothes are off, it's, <laughs> this, it's this group. Yeah. Uh, so it was a wild shot in the dark. We put it together and, um, you know, it, it took off and we've done real well with it. And uh, so that's where Naughty Gym came from. It's nothing pornographic about it. We It's genuine. It's real fitness coaching, nutrition coaching. It's just marketed to the sex positive community. So we market it to LGBTQ, polyamorous people, any variation of consensual non-monogamy. Uh, but what happens is, is it's done inside of a private platform that functions like a Facebook group. So people can communicate, they can talk to each other, they can meet like-minded people. Oh. And uh, th that's really what is at the heart of Naughty Gym. Now, eventually people started wanting to meet. Sure. Because, you know, they were, they were all over the country. We have people in multiple continents and stuff. Oh. And that's where the events came from. And that's where the event at Hedonism you know, eventually that's been our biggest event so far. We did yeah. some smaller ones and then built up and and then we had the event at uh, Jamaica, but that primarily started to get our members who were scattered all over the country together and to meet face to face. I'm curious, how did you market it at the beginning yeah. to start to get members? I mean, where, you know, where did you go with it that you were, that you grew, that you grew that how, the way you did? Mostly podcasts, uh, because okay. you can't, you can't advertise, you can't do paid ads on social media that have right. anything to do with sex. Yeah. Or if you can, if anybody out there knows how to do that, please message me. Uh, <laughs> cause we don't know how, and it gets, everything gets banned that we try to put up, but, um, mostly through podcasts, we go to a lot of events and, and market ourselves, you know, that way. Um, and it started out fairly slow, but it's really picked up for us over the past year or so. Um, nice. but yeah, that's, it's mostly face to face word of mouth and, uh, podcasts. Nice. Okay. Nice. Yeah. I love your merch. word of mouth. Yes. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a cool shirt. So yeah, that's it. I like it. I like it. So with the uh, coaching, were you doing a bunch of coaching prior? Mm. <laughs> Sorry, I was taking more. Vodka. We got it. Shot uh, in, yeah. in the wash down. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, so I've been coaching CrossFit for since 19, I mean, I'm sorry, not 19, uh, since 2010, arguably, so okay. thir 13, 14 years now. Uh, we just sold our last gym last week. La yeah. uh, in fact, this past Saturday, what, you know, I don't know when this is going to air, but um, we are five days on the other side of unemployment, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, I mean, we're not, we, we, we are running naughty gym and that was been our goal is to be able to focus on naughty gym full time. Yeah. We finally feel like we've gotten to that point. Uh, and we, uh, walked out of our last gym, uh, heads held high this past Saturday and, uh, said goodbye to everybody. And, and now this is what we do. I, it must've been a sad, bittersweet, you know, the, the was. walk away, you it know, it was very bittersweet. That was, that last day was our chance to just hug everybody and cry and do all those kinds of things. It, it's tough because a CrossFit gym is different than a big commercial gym. CrossFit gym, everybody knows you. They, we, we know everybody's names, their families, how many kids they've got, that kind of thing. And uh, the whole gym is full of our friends. Yeah. And we felt like we needed to walk away, literally leave the gym, not just stay on as members, but no longer owners, but to actually leave the gym for two reasons. One, we wanted the new ownership to be able to establish themselves as the, the people, you know, sure. but because our community knows who we are and what we do in our private life, and many of them hate us for it and won't join that gym because of it, we felt like we needed to sort of whitewash our stench off of it. <laughs> lack, oh. lack of better words. Yeah. Uh, yeah we, yeah. It's, it's so we, we, we've left to give them, you know, their wings to fly and, and to kind of, you know, repair the reputation of it, I suppose. <laughs> so, wait, I mean, how nice of you to do, but it's unfortunate. What percentage yeah. of people did you see leave when, when you, when you got out? Of it? We lost half our gym over two months, 50%. Wow. Yep. Wow. That's crazy. right at it. it. It was something like 48% or something, but yeah, it was basically half our, uh, started in, uh, the podcast came out in July or June, I'm sorry. And then July and August, we lost over that two month period. We lost half our members. Now we, to April's defense as a, I mean, she's a warrior. She rebuilt it. Um, 
and that's why we were able to sell it because it's never had a losing uh non-profitable month. Oh but nice. Okay. That was that was all her hard work. And at the same time that happened, both of her parents were in the hospital for about two months with COVID and ultimately ended up dying in the hospital five days apart. All of this was happening at the same time. Oh Jesus. And uh so it was a brutal six month period for us. Yeah. Well, sorry to hear that. Um uh, but it, it you know we went through that. We didn't fight ever. We and now you kind of come through something that dramatic, and you feel like you can conquer the world. You know, yeah. I, don't, I don't feel like anything could ever come between us. And um, you know, that woman's a warrior, and 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 she salvaged that gym when most people would have shut the doors. Yeah, right. That's, that's true. A lot of people would have gave up. After I'm that. guessing most. Yeah, most people probably would have went out running as soon as. I mean, when you lose fifty percent of your clients, yeah, get out yeah. as quick as you can before. Yeah. Well, good for her, real, and. and as I think you know, it, she wasn't on there. When we had her on, she wasn't on there tooting her horn about all this stuff. I mean, she was very gracious, and but, she, you know, she yeah. probably deserves more credit than she. Yeah, she, doesn't give, her, she doesn't give herself enough right. credit. She, uh, she's an animal. And, uh, uh, you know, it's it's impressive to kind of sit back and watch her do her thing every yeah. day because, uh, you know, it, Naughty Jim, too, wouldn't be what it is without. Well, in fact, Naughty Jim, if, if she were to wisen up and leave me tomorrow, <laughs> Naughty Jim would probably fold. <laughs> it would go with her, is what you're saying? Yeah, it would probably go with her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, but you guys, but how long now have you been together? We have been together since 2016. So, okay. now what is that? Six, seven, eight years? Eight whatever. years now. Yeah. I'm going on yeah. eight years. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. And, and I think it goes back to what you said. I mean, through COVID and all the, the stress that you went through, that didn't split you up. I, I don't know what is. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I do. I feel and that, you know, and part of being in an open relationship is always fighting trust issues. And, oh, my goodness, is my wife going to find somebody better than me? Is my husband going to find somebody they like better than me? What we've been through, you know, I just can't imagine anything separating us. We came through that stuff as a team and, uh, you know, we'll go to our deathbed as a team. And, and it, it, Nice. Anybody who's watched the podcast sees the natural chemistry you have. And I like how you guys bust each other's balls and it rolls right <laughs> off. And, and, uh, I definitely want to talk about the, the, the recent, uh, edible, uh, event. So that you just talked about on a podcast. Oh, that I took the edible. Yeah. 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 Oh my God. I see. I'm so stupid. <laughs> so we, we've all, so been for, yeah, but if we're asking, so you don't regularly do edibles, uh, or did you yes. just overdo it? No. Yeah. Well, both. Uh, yeah. So I, I don't do, so it doesn't matter the strain. I can't stay awake on marijuana. It doesn't matter whether it's smoked gummies. It doesn't, it's irrelevant whether it's sativa, indica, it puts me to sleep. Um, indica will put me to sleep quicker, but they both do it. So I take it to stay or to sleep well. Yeah. I don't take it every night, but probably half the nights I take it. And I use gummies. And usually I don't even feel the effect of it because I fall asleep before it kicks in. And yeah, it, but just it just keeps you asleep. Yeah, it just keeps me asleep. Well, yeah. in Alabama, it's not legal. But there's a loophole that allows them to sell uh, Delta 8 and Delta 9, I think. Right. I don't really know the science behind all that, but it's some kind of. Difference. It's a loophole. Yeah, we've. Yeah. yeah. We're the same in Wisconsin here. It's not legal here. Yeah, we can get we can get Delta 8, but we can't get right. actual THC. I don't think the gummies that are done that way are consistent because this night that we're talking about, I took my regular half. I have a 30 milligram gummy. I take half of it. So that's 15 milligrams. Yeah. And that keeps, that keeps me knocked out. I took it. And two hours later, I still didn't feel anything. And this is one of the rare nights that I wasn't able to fall asleep on my own anyway. So I just rolled over and decided, I thought, well, maybe this is just one that didn't, didn't work through the process real well. and doesn't have much, in it and so i took the other i took the other half went right to sleep a few hours later i needed to use i woke up because i needed to use the bathroom <laughs> needed to pee and uh i tried to sit up and the entire universe started imploding around me and i i, I felt nauseous the room was spinning everything was humming and uh i i laid back down and i Kept wanting to get up to use the bathroom, but at some point I thought, well, I'm just going to lay here and pee in the bed because that's the only option I have. <laughs> right? Yep. I can't get point. up. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I can't do. get up without throwing up. 
<laughs> well, then I decided, well, wait a minute. It would be better to get up and throw up in the floor than to just pee in the bed while she's asleep. <laughs> uh, this is a process. You you know, when you're high, you don't think. Yeah, really. I'll just, just got a comment. These are the great things that go through your mind as you're trying to fix your situation. <laughs> So I get up out of there. My bed, my side of the bed is on the opposite side of the room from the bathroom, of course. So I have to keep my hands on the bed and slowly work my way around like a toddler learning to walk <laughs> all the way around the bed till I get in the bathroom. And then I get to the toilet and I have to sit down and pee. <laughs> well, then I sit there like 15 or 20 minutes because I can't get up. <laughs> everything's, everything's, I'm just nauseous. And finally, I decide to try to get up. She has not woke up during this entire process, I get off the toilet and I make it three steps to the doorway of the bathroom. And then I have to lean against the doorway. That's when she woke up. She was facing me the way she was sleeping. Yeah. She wakes up and see me leaning into the, in the door. She goes, what are you doing? And then I pass out or I fall down. Oh, and I, I remember coming to and asking her where I was at. And she goes, Oh my God, what is wrong with you? What have you done? Have you taken something? And so now I realize what's happened. Yeah. And I'm, I'm conscious enough to really know what's going on, but I was embarrassed. I didn't want to tell her I had overdosed on marijuana <laughs> or I don't know. If, I don't know if overdose is the right <laughs> word. Is the word. Yeah. I, I, told her, yeah. <laughs> I told her, I said, I think I passed out. She goes, baby, you took something. You, there's no way you just passed out. And I said, you know, people pass out for no reason. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 uh, and, and so I, 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 I end up just crawling into the bed, crawling over her side onto mine. And just, and that's the last thing I remember slept like a champ, slept like a million dollars the next day. I don't know how long I slept. Well, then I think it's over, right? I got away with it. I didn't have to tell her I did something stupid. You know? <laughs> Well, that's the biggest she, win right there, right? Right. Yeah. That, that was well, that was stupid. my only concerns. I didn't want to think I'd just done something dumb. Well, she goes to the gym. Our uh, uh the the physician's assistant is a, that I go to is a member of our gym. Oh no. And so she goes right to her and won't and, and I don't know this, but she's having her check my I had just gone to a physical a few days before that, my like twice a year physical. She has her checking my EKG, my blood work, like going back and putting a second set of eyes on it to see, look, this guy's got something wrong with him. And this goes on for, with her obsessing. She calls our insurance company and checks and makes sure our life insurance is still in paid up. <laughs> <laughs> and she confesses all this stuff at lunch, like two or three days later. And I, I finally, I, I said, listen, I've got a confession to make. <laughs> I'm fine. Quit worrying about me. I just took too many gummies. That night. <laughs> and um, then she, of course, was mad at me for lying to her, which was only the second time in our relationship I've lied. Uh, but uh, yeah, so that was a story. And, and <laughs> we, we, she's still giving me shit about it. But yeah, good for her in a fun way, in a fun way. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, but, but that but isn't that the thing? You don't think about it. It's like, I got away with it. But she's going, oh my God, you, right. my husband just passed off for no reason. We got to find yeah. out why. She was Guys already out. Like, yeah. She was already out looking for a replacement husband. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I, <mean. laughs> I was like, I'll find a younger, rich guy now. <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait. You said the second time you lied to her. Do we can do we get to know what the first time was? Or wow, is this? Oh, look at you. Oh, cry. Yeah, well, the, well, the first time, I mean, I can tell this story, but it's going to eat up the entire podcast. It was a lot. It was my fault. And it was a lifestyle or a open relationship party that we were hosting. And it, you, it's not interesting enough to take up the podcast, right. but right. suffice it to say that I, I screwed up on that one. It, it Yeah. I'll just leave it at that. We just screwed up. That's, <laughs> yeah. We do that. We're, we're men. We screw up uh, a lot. Yeah. You guys are trying to get me in trouble again. So I'm going <laughs> to yeah. shut up about that event. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're doing what we can. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> So how how does the uh, the be better at being bad uh, hedonism event come come about? How where did the idea come from? And well, so you guys know about hedonism, what it is? Yeah. And, and, and just briefly, in case somebody listening yeah, does, yeah, it's, it's good it's idea. Probably, it's probably the most iconic adult playground resort in the world. It's a clothing optional resort. People go there that are nudists and want to hang out naked, or that are interested. You know, they're in some version of an open relationship and they want to meet other people, and, and that can take various forms. But the result, uh, the resort is very open to all of that. You can go with your spouse and have sex on a day bed on the beach if that's what you want to do. It can be mild, it can be wild, you know, whatever you want. Yeah. Um, some friends of ours that go there frequently reached out 
to them, to the management of the resort and said, look, you guys should talk to this, to our friends. They have a business called Naughty Gym. The resort reached out to us and said, we want you to come down and evaluate our health and wellness. They have a spa, they have a gym, they have all kinds of programs. They wanted us to evaluate it. So they oh. paid for us to come down, which was great. We had never Those been the before. Best. Yeah. 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 We went down there and uh, we pitched them some ideas. One of the things we, we wanted to do though, that we thought they'd say no to, but we, you know, what does it matter? We, if they say no, fine. We, we pitched this idea of a sexual health and wellness summit where we come down and bring a lot of experts that, that we know with us that can talk about how sex and uh, fitness, sex and nutrition, lifestyle choices and all that stuff intersects and uh, can make your life better if, you know, you, you work on getting yourself healthier. Well, uh, they loved the idea. They accepted the offer or the idea immediately and made an offer for us to come down. We, we picked a date. It took, and it was like a year later. And, uh, you know, it was the biggest event we've ever done. There ended up being, uh, we think we were told 204 or let's see, it had been 428 people there plus our team of presenters. So it was a Crazy. huge event. And, and it was, you know, there were parties, obviously there was all the stuff that he was famous for, but then we added all of the like breakout sessions where we had psychologists and sex coaches and uh, people who teach things as mundane as relationship jealousy issues yeah, and as triple X rated as uh butt play. So, I mean, it, it was every imaginable category and uh, we didn't know how it was going to go, but Turned out it went incredibly well. Um, the resort re invited us back next year. In case anybody's interested and wants to go to the most fun week of your life, <laughs> <laughs> it'll be January 4th through the 11th in 2025. And, okay. uh, you know, and it, April said a lot of the, uh, the any breakout sessions of talking early on, nervous about they were overflowing with people. It was, it was a great oh, success yeah, yeah, even the, for that. Yeah, the resort told us they were not confident that we would ever get anybody away from the the, the nude pool or the nude beach or the parties that are happening through the daytime. And they are incredibly fun and wild. Yeah. Uh, we felt like we could get them away from that, at least for a period of time. And uh, so they agreed to let us give it a shot. And they came in, I think it was the it was either first or second day as the breakout sessions were starting. One of those sessions had 80 something people in it, which was monstrous. They said at best we get 10, 15 people. Yeah. And, wow. Uh, they uh they were standing in there at the back of the room and I <laughs> I remember us asking them well what do you think and they said well you proved us wrong so perfect people are willing to break away from the party if there's something that's gonna if they really feel like it's something that's gonna benefit them and uh, true you know, it's a it was a tremendous event so yeah we were thankful well let's face it and when you're there you know you can break away from the party <laughs> because. When you get come back, the party's still going to be there. So yeah. it's not it's and not like you're missing the one party of the day. <laughs> and when else are you going to get those those to be able to talk about those things? Right, the exactly. Subjects. And she, well, and but it's hard. Very to... very clear to make sure that she said every time she talked about one of the breakaway uh, talks or the speakers, then we went and partied, <laughs> and then That's we right. went and partied, <laughs> yeah, and then we went and party. So well, it's it's difficult to party all day. All night oh, absolutely. Seven, yeah. seven straight days. I mean, there are people that can do it, but I mean, good grief. That's, yeah. you know, <laughs> that's, that's a, it takes a toll on you. So it was, it was a welcome relief for a lot of the <laughs> people to know that they had something they could step away from the drinking and partying and dancing and learn, uh, you know, some of these bedroom skills that let's face it, sex is a skill. It's not yeah. something you're born knowing how to do. And if you think you're inherently good at it, you probably suck at it. Uh, <laughs> and, no, and nobody's told you. And, and Bam. So, wow. <laughs> uh, oh, that's, that's the truth right there. That's like in your face. I mean, I've been, you know, we've been to a lot of these types of things. There's a big event in new Orleans every year called naughty in new Orleans. Oh, okay. And uh, you know, there'll be three or 4,000 people at it. And they have some of these sessions as well. And every time I go into anything like this, I learn just how little I actually know about the yeah. art of sex and, yeah. you know, you, but the more you hear it, the more people teach you, and the more you're open to it, the better you get at it. And I've always thought, and I, I even from early on, is you, you I'll, I'll learn, you I'll learn. Well, I did think I was oh, amazing. Okay. In high school, I thought I was amazing. <laughs> that was the greatest three minutes they ever had. <laughs> Guaranteed. Why? <laughs> I, I, at one point, I remember going, yeah, I'll, I'll learn. I'll just keep listening. I'll, I want to I want to please them more, more every time. And that brings me pleasure. Yeah, the more I learn about sex, the more sorry I feel for the people who had to have sex with me years ago. 
<laughs> That's a good way to look at it. Yeah. yeah I'm poor bastards. <laughs> but they didn't know either. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Maybe, I don't know. So <laughs> if I re- and if remember correctly, that she had some breakout sessions and uh, apologize for not knowing that groups. And then next year you're gonna inc- you're gonna do some for some with uh, men. She had some women groups. No, no, we had she had women's groups. I had men's groups. So we did one so of you the did th- have it this year. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. I thought it was okay. Go ahead. Actually, there was a the, the, there was only one type of event that separated the genders, and that was a thing we call she calls it uh, for her. It's mimosas with April. And okay. my version of that is shots with Scott. <laughs> and, um, but you don't have to drink these things. But basically what they are is we get a small group together. Um, the day we did that and next year, we're going to do it twice because everybody asked us to do it a second time. But I think we had close to a hundred people. If you combine the women that went with her and the men that went with me, but that's too many to have in a group. We, we like to keep those group sizes down about 10 or 12. So what happened was we would, we had two or three guys, me and a couple of others that took a portion of the men each 10 to 12. And then she did that with the women. Okay. Um, and we went around this, we just formed little circles, mm-hmm. talked about what are your expectations for this week? Where are you at on your journey with your relationship? What does your sex life look like? And do you want it to be different? If so, how, uh, you know, what have you tried in the past? What are you hoping to do this week? Those sorts of questions. And um, women embrace that right away. They they want to go to those sessions. That her, there were more women than there were men at mm-hmm. these. Uh, the guys, though, once they're in there, they realize how valuable it is because yeah. you you bond quickly with these other. We want to think that the guys, especially, that we're all these confident, full of bravado men, and and I don't need to talk to other guys to feel comfortable. And you know, it's just not that we need the same thing that women do. Yeah. And you know, I, I don't know how many guys in our in my little circle ended up crying during this conversation, but man, you come out of there feeling like um, you, you feel this bond because you've expressed yourself in a way that in day to day life you don't get to do and probably would never feel comfortable doing. And so those sessions are probably the most popular thing that we do. Wow. And because they so, really help bond people and help you open up. So, what was the, the most the most popular when you ask that question to all these guys um, what was the biggest thing that they wanted to learn from that session. Uh, well, surprisingly, well, I don't know if I should say surprisingly, but I know that when we first got into our version of an open relationship, one of the things that we wanted or one of the only things we were comfortable with was uh, having a threesome with another woman. Now, April and I are both bisexual at the time. I didn't, I had not really embraced that part of my sexuality yet. She had. And so we thought, well, we'll, we'll have sex with another woman and that's great. And that will, that'll be fun. And everybody thinks that's uh, easy to do. Now, and it's I, just, I don't not, think that's easy you know, to you, do. <laughs> you don't just, you just, you can't walk down to the local grocery store and just go up to people and pick them out. <laughs> right. It just doesn't work that way. Um, but what was surpri- surprising to us, I guess, is that a lot of men in the lifestyle or in open relationships really want to see their wives happy, maybe even more so than they do themselves. Sure. Especially after they've been in it for a long enough time where some of their insecurities stop, start to drop about seeing their wife with another person. And uh, so one of the things that comes up every time we're in these uh little small group discussions is how the guys really want to know how to let themselves, let their wives experience having a relationship with another man. Mm. It's it's difficult. We grow up thinking that, you know, a real man would never do that. How would you ever let or watch your wife with another man? Right. Um, But once you get over the hurdle of the emotional side of that, it becomes one of the most erotic experiences ever. It's one of the most popular, uh, a thing called hot wifing is one of the most popular porn searches on Pornhub. Yeah. Um, because it's an empowering feeling as a man to, to know that you can give your wife an experience that another man never would have the courage to do. Yeah. Oh. But it is brutally difficult to get there because of our upbringing and the way society drills into us that that's just not something that you should do. And you're going to lose your wife to this person. And and really all it does when done well is make her closer to you. Sure, sure. 
Um, that comes up a lot. You know, the guy saying, how do I get over this insecurity of seeing my wife with somebody else? Every guy is fine with watching his woman, his wife with another woman. Absolutely. True. Yep. yep. Um, I say every, that's not true, but most. No, but I, we, I think, I think all of us know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, yeah. That's, I think all of us are on every, with that. And, and every guy is okay with himself being with another woman. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, you know, well, you hit on there. And I think that for, you know, a, a big thing is the emotion. So when you're having sex with someone you love, each time your emotions get stronger. Yeah. And, and that's, and I, I feel that's when your emotions are the strongest. So you hit it on there with the emotions. How do you, so now you got to, it's going to be a bigger emotion to let them go. Um, what if they have that emotion with someone else, I guess is a, is a, is a drawback or a roadblock in my head. Yeah, that is, that's the fear uh, initially. And it may always be the fear. And if it never goes away, then that kind of open relationship structure is just not for you. And that's fine. It's not for everybody. Right. Um, but once it drops and it does drop for a lot of people, and it, and it happens in various ways, whether you are talking to other people that are in the lifestyle that have a lot more experience or whether you talk to somebody, there's counselors that talk, you know, that will help mm -hmm. you through this process. Uh, but once it does drop and there's a thing that, you know, the opposite of jealousy is a word called compersion. It's where jealousy is when you see your spouse or your person, you don't like seeing them take pleasure in something, at least it's when it comes to sex, like you would get jealous if you saw your wife flirting maybe with another man. That's a good example of a thing that would make somebody jealous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. compersion, compersion is the opposite of that. It's where you, you see them doing that and taking pleasure in it. And you get joy from seeing them have that pleasure. But that is not a thing we're raised to believe is okay. Right. But why not? You know, why not let them have that pleasure? Now, the the first answer for me personally is, well, what if she likes that person more than me? Right. Or what mm -hmm. if that what if that guy's better in bed than me? Or, you know, there's all kind of what ifs. Uh, and I don't think that you should ever approach the idea of an open relationship if you don't feel secure in your current one like you, you can't fix a problematic relationship it's not going to solve problems in fact it's going to magnify problems sure but if things are going well um it man it can deepen things so much i mean we have both literally laid there and watched each other have sex with other people yeah, I mean, yeah. Laid, laid within right next to, she's laid there and watched me have sex with another woman i've laid there and watched her have sex with another man that's not the way our typical play sessions go but that has happened and both of us have felt this immense joy of being able to give that pleasure to our partners. And then, man, when we go back to our room after that, the makeup, uh, not makeup sex, the, a lot of times people call it reclaiming your sure. person. Oh, okay. You have, yeah. that, you have that sex after it. Oh, God, there's nothing more intense than that. I would imagine. Um, and well, I was going to ask, after that happens, is that when you talk about it or you have sex and then talk about it or... Uh, it, it depends. It's like, different, but, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. And, and when you, when we were newer, we talked more because there were so many questions, more concerns, more rules, more boundaries, yeah. things that we put in place to keep our, our relationship, which is the primary thing, the most yeah. important thing protected. Right now there's less rules, there's less boundaries, and maybe the conversations aren't as important as they used to be after something's over because we know each other so well. Uh, but we do still have those conversations, but you know, that may come second to the makeups, the, the follow up <laughs> yeah. set or something. Yeah. We, we not, save, the now. save the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's just in it, every situation is different. You know, sure. we, if, if I felt like something didn't go very well or she feels like something didn't go very well in a play session with somebody else, that conversation may take place immediately sure. after it's over. Oh, absolutely. Uh, but, you know, if it went well, then. We might not even have a conversation. We'd be like yeah. high fiving each other as we walk out <laughs> and then go about our day. You know, is there any aspect of it that you struggle with still um, or at the beginning? There's so one of the things we've been wanting to try, and we haven't. We've done this once, uh, but we haven't done it the way she wanted to do it. We actually did it the way I wanted to do it. Is separate dating? Okay. Now, for some people, that's the way they start because they don't like seeing their person with another person. And so they feel like this is a great starting point for them because they don't have to watch it. Yeah. Uh, most people don't though. That, that I think, I think I would be accurate in saying that for most people, that's considered a very advanced stage. We have this separate dating thing. 
Um, it definitely feels that way for us. Yeah. Uh, and so much so that when the topic came up the first time for us, she, this was years ago, she said, look, if I ever come to you and suggest separate dating, know that our relationship is in trouble. <laughs> you should oh. run. <laughs> oh, and then guess what happened about a year ago when we were at hedonism, <laughs> we walked away from a conversation. We're walking back to our room. We had a conversation with this couple who does separate dating all the time. And she, she, uh, looked at me. We, neither one of us were talking as we walked away from that conversation. Great conversation. Yeah. We walk away quiet, get about halfway to our room. And she looks at me, she goes, do you think we should try separate dating? And every alarm <laughs> bell in my emotional system went off because of that. I was like, you told me I should run. Yeah. 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 She goes, yeah, that was years ago. I don't know. Because one of the things we struggle with is uh, a four-way connection. Like, usually I'm more attracted to the woman or she's more attracted to the man. And there's not this equality in the connection. Oh, sure. And uh, we think that separate dating might help us with that because we get to kind of find a person that we specifically like ourselves. And it doesn't matter whether their spouse is somebody our spouse is attracted to. True. Yeah. So yeah. we we did uh this is to me is our favorite YouTube or podcast video we ever did was a, our first video on separate dating where we talked through live because we hadn't gone through what our rules would look like if we were going to try a separate date. We talked them through live on YouTube or on our podcast. And we came up with a set of rules and agreed to them. We said, "All right, we're going to try it." Well, we, we went on a dating app separately each, build our accounts. Within about three hours of launching those accounts on a Saturday, she was in conversations with like 20 different guys. Well, and understandably. Nobody had even responded to my profile. Oh. <laughs> so all of a sudden, I'm like, well, this is a terrible idea. Yeah, I don't this idea this sucks. <laughs> but eventually, but we kind of expected that. I mean, she's a beautiful woman. and Yeah, and, she's going to. You know, I, 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 we expected that. I didn't, by the know. way, I'm, I'm still waiting for a response from her when we're going to get, to, I'm just kidding. <laughs> her separate date response. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I reached out to her and I'll no, tell her. To check her. <laughs> don't, don't hold your breath. <laughs> well, um, so a, a, a lot to cut through it. Long story short, we both ended up setting up separate dates through this dating app and it was, okay. it, we were good to go. We had the dates arranged where we were going, all this stuff. The guy, she was uh, set to go out on a date with, some morning bells started to go off because he started getting clingy. He would ask questions like, well, you know, if this goes well on the first day, what do you want to do? Like maybe one a week, two a week. And she's like, whoa, slow down a bit. You know, this is just a date and it may never happen again. I don't know. Um, and that, that stuff started accumulating to the point where she wanted to call it off. When she called hers off, I called mine off. Okay. Um, our best, and we put, we did a follow-up video or podcast about that, that how that was, how that all played out. Sure. And then our friends, our very best friends stepped in and said, well, Hey, we, we would like to be your first guinea pigs. Oh, oh. well, one of the things April had wanted was to not know the person she sure. thinks she doesn't enjoy as much as watching me flirt the, the kind of flirting, maybe light petting kind of stuff. And that's the part I like the best. So okay. she thought, well, as long as I don't know the person, you go out on this date, do whatever you want. I don't care. Um, so to do it with our friend, and she didn't want to know them, but doing it with our friends obviously was not what she had in mind, but it, it, they were such close friends that uh, it it felt doable for her. And um, so she we did that and the, the dates went really well, um, but we still have never done the... Uh, separate dates with somebody that she doesn't know that I'm going out with and some, you know, guy that we've never met, but we're going to try that now that we've sold our gyms, have a little more free time on our hands. Yeah, that's, there you go. So you when know, you, come so your dating apps that you went on, is it a dating app or is it the, uh, like a hookup app? Well, it's called the one we used was called field F E E L D. And I guess some people use it for hooking up uh, for us. It was meant to be, you know, a date and, but, we even say this in our first video or first podcast episode that sex was on the table. If it went well, you know, you could have sex with the person you went on a date with. Sure. We just gave each other a curfew. There was no spending the night. It was, uh, okay. You, know, you, you go on the date and you, we had to meet back up by two o'clock and we were going to have dates on the same night. Sure. sure. Who so, knows? So it's set up like, so yeah, you get there. Everything was great. We talked for a couple or an hour and you're like, this guy's a dud. She could be like done. Yeah, right. obviously she doesn't have to have sex that night, but correct. Yeah, I mean, or you don't have to. 
So I, I get that, but so I, yeah, I guess I was more of the, if I didn't know if there are hookup sites for the, uh, within your. Oh. Yeah. I think the, that app we used is used by a lot of people as a hookup site, but uh, we wanted to be able to see if our relationship is improved or not by going out and spending this quality time with another person. If yeah. you go if it goes well, great. We'll do it again. If it doesn't, we'll shut it down. You know, our that we feel confident in the foundation of what we have to be able yeah. to experiment and we communicate well enough with each other to be able to say, look, this experiment, whatever that experiment happens to be in the moment, is not going well, and then we'll shut it down. But if it does go well, it's you know, it could become part of our relationship repertoire. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's a fluid process for you. Just because you you've done something once doesn't mean you're gonna do it continuously and right and something that you haven't done yet may become part of you know the greater lexicon at some point or that's right we've learned we've learned never to say never about anything you know we we just yeah. we live life day to day and we wake up every day smiling at each other and we go to bed that way we, we really have a tremendous relationship and um you know that allows us to play around with some things that society thinks we shouldn't do i'm curious do you think do you think your relationship would be as strong without the playing uh yeah. do you think you could be complete you know what i mean I, I, well, that's a that's a great question <laughs> um i think it would be incredibly strong yeah it's it's almost like asking um would your relationship be as strong if you didn't go to movies together because that's one of the things we like you know, so you know we we go to movies and it makes our relationship better i don't know that going to movies is necessary for us to have a strong relationship it's it's um it's something that we do because we have fun with this whole process, um, but we could live our life monogamously happy uh, until we died. Yeah. Uh, I do think it adds to our relationship, though, but I also think we would be incredibly happy without it. Well, I think there's that um, when any start or I mean, the first conversation of when you back when you started it, who started who said it first and nervous to ask the other one about you know expanding or whatever so i guess that that's the thing is if you're in a relationship where one really really wants to and the other doesn't i don't know that they're going to go anywhere that relationship's going to be diminished no, yeah, over time yeah. um yeah it's uh it's a question we get asked a lot by people um, we usually get men messaging us wanting to know how do i talk my wife into trying this which is a red flag right off the bat <laughs> if you can't talk to your wife about it right without fear of repercussions, this is not the time. And if you're having to message us when she doesn't know it, you know, it's probably a sign that your relationship is not ready for something ready, or it's not going to last. So yeah. in your, in your, your group chats and your naughty gym chats and all that. And uh, with the group that, you know, have there been times where people have uh, crossed and then, broken up because of it because they did a feel a better connection with someone else i mean is there a slight percentage of people that do yeah it happens we've heard about it happening now i don't know anybody personally that that's happened to uh or at least if i do know them i don't know that that happened in their past but um yeah i'm sh that happens i've heard of it and surely it does happen i mean right. it, it you know it happens the same way somebody has a Ma a female has a male friend at work or something. And eventually six years later, they end up together. Mm -hmm. um, right. Yes, right. it happens. Um, there's no risk-free way of approaching non -mono consensual non-monogamy or monogamy. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Absolutely. And neither yeah, one it, of them are risk-free. I think it's over 50% now of uh, relationships end up in divorce or marriages end up in divorce. Oh, so, um, you know, and, and, and we're not shutting monogamy down because- right. It's a 50% failure rate. Exactly. But there are a lot of, uh, the research is starting to to pick up on non-monogamous or open relationships. And it does appear that the divorce rate is fairly similar, but that the happiness level of people in some, varia some variation of a non-monogamous relationship seems to be higher. But there's still a lot of research that needs to be done on this. Uh, yeah. All I know is that for us and all of our friends that we know, it is an incredibly uh, fun way to live your life. And it's not just about the sex. It is the deep connections that we get to make with other people that uh, go far beyond what most vanilla relationships 
have. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. So let's get into the bisexuality. How do you find, how, do, when, when do you start to think about bisexuality and, and, uh, act on it? Yeah. And act on it. Was it was something in your younger years that you were interested in or did it? No, in fact, in fact, I'll say that uh, not only did I not think I was bisexual, I was disgusted by it. The idea of two men having, so this is, was, that, your, was that what your upbringing though? No, I don't think so. Well, it okay. could have been. I, there's okay. no way for me to know that, but because what I'm going to say is controversial. All right. Okay. I, I think I somewhat willed willed myself into this. Okay. Some people are going to hate that comment, but I genuinely feel like I was disgusted by that idea growing up. Could that have been my upbringing? Of course, it had to have some effect. Mm -hmm. and maybe it, maybe it was totally the reason I felt that way. But I don't feel like I was a person that was bisexual and was hiding it or denying it because of my culture, only to finally have the courage to come out. It just doesn't feel like the way it happened for me. Uh, as we got more and more open, April and I, with our sexuality in general, I just started opening up to more possibilities. She likes watching guy on guy porn. So I said, well, look, I, you know, it doesn't do it for me, but I'll watch it with you. Yeah. And, uh, and then it started doing it for me a little bit slowly. And then I opened up to it a little bit more and, and, you know, just over the years I said, you know, I'd, I'd like to try it sometime if the, the opportunity ever presents itself. Never so say it's never. Right. right. Uh -oh. well, but does it go back to, uh, cause okay. she enjoys it. Yes. So, so what you, to make her happy. Yeah, 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 but legitimately over the, to shortcut this process, uh, eventually it became something that I was. I'm incredibly turned on by in the right circumstance. I'm not romantically attracted to guys like, oh, I would like to have a private date with them or something like that. Okay. But the uh, sexuality side of it, yeah. You know, I've had a lot of experiences now, and and um, it's something that is part of our life, and she loves it. And so, yeah. Hmm. Now, have you done, have you ever done stuff just? Well, I suppose not because you're talking about separate dating and I suppose that would fall into separate dating. You've never been alone with a guy without her. It's always been part of play. No. Uh, when, by the way, I've got about five minutes. I've got to get off because we got another zoom coming okay. up. But, okay. Um, no, I have never been alone with a guy. I don't think that would bother her. Like she would like, we, we could do separate dates and she go, she's been on a trip with another girl her, the, who was her girlfriend at the time. Yeah. She would be totally fine with me doing that. I don't really have a desire but who knows? Five years from now, I may be on a yacht with some gay, <laughs> gay guy who's paid my way there. I don't know. Not, not never say never. That's right. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. Well, we, we'll wrap her up. But uh, so we want to give you a chance to. Well, I want to say one thing first. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Um, because the re one of the reasons, like I said, that we. <laughs> Hi. That we. <laughs> she there? Where'd she go? Where'd she go? Upstairs. She went back upstairs. Oh, okay. <laughs> One of the reasons that I really wanted to have this conversation is because I watched the episode where you talked about the bisexuality and, uh, and I think, and it's to, it's not to the same level, but I've, I'm on antidepressants and I've tried to talk openly about it as much as possible, because I think some of these issues that don't get talked about, you know, people feel shame about them because there aren't people willing to talk about them. Yeah. So your willingness to come out and tell everybody on the internet that, you know, you're bisexual, something that some people are going to look at you and go, Oh, Jesus Christ. You know, it was very yeah. brave and, and, uh, and I appreciate it and applaud you for it. And, uh, I'm glad that we got a chance to talk to you personally. Well, I, I appreciate it. Yeah. I, I, um, because we've been outed and went through all the stuff that we did, I've kind of made it a minor mission of mine to just be transparent and authentic. And, uh, if that helps somebody down the road, great. You know, I don't, I don't think I'm anybody that many people are listening to, but if I do help somebody because I'm willing to talk about it, uh, you know, so be it. Yeah, even if it's one person, I, I, it's, you, well, you know. yeah, we always say that, but I think it, it, the more people are open about it, can talk about it, the more people see it, the better it is. Well, and it's the same with consensual non-monogamy. People think, yeah. you know, All that, it. oh, it's just a, you're walking into a big room of people and it's a giant orgy. It's not that for us. Mm -hmm. The sex is secondary. We love it. I love sex. Everybody likes sex, yeah, right? Yeah. Well, but it's the deep connections that we form with people that you just, it's just hard to do in any other environment. And and our, the friends that we have now in our life, I mean, we legitimately love them to their core and yeah. uh, I'm thankful for, I really am thankful that I got outed. 
Yeah, <laughs> right. In the end, it all worked out oh, the way perfect. it was supposed to work out. It's beautiful. And yeah. I got to go before we say we, my last thing, then we'll let you promote all your stuff, is that we're you have an upcoming spring soiree. <laughs> I fucked it up anyway. <laughs> spring soiree. Soiree. Yeah. Soir- I, I can't say it either. That's soiree. Funny. He yeah, wanted me to say it because I fuck everything up. Yeah, it's in it's in uh, Huntsville, Alabama, and um, you know if you're anybody's close enough to come to it, feel free to reach us, message us on any of our social media outlets at Naughty Jim. Um, but yeah, it's just a meet and greet for people who think the way we do that you know it's okay if you have a little bit deeper relationship with people uh, than what society says you can. So yeah, we we're excited about doing these kinds of things and getting people together. Uh, it, it's kind of something that brings us a lot of joy is to put these events together where people can, can gather and talk and flirt and have fun. Awesome. Perfect. And awesome. where can they reach out to you? Yeah. So our primary uh, outlet is our website, naughty gym.com, www.naughty um, You know, we have a membership for, we, we put workouts up every day for whether you have a full gym, uh, dumbbells, no, no equipment, it's a legitimate, very good workout program that is designed to keep you looking good and not hurting, which is our primary uh, goals for our fitness. And we do nutrition coaching. You can meet people in there. We do trips all over the world. Uh, we're probably going to be in El Salvador in 2025. So uh, it's really become something that's, I don't know, it's kind of a dream uh, job now at this point. And it's all because of the, the uh, community that we're involved in. That's awesome. That's awesome. awesome. Living the dream. Well, thank you so much. And we appreciate you coming on and chit chatting and open up to us. And it's been great. Well, thank you guys for having me and my wife. You know, Absolutely. you've been kind. We, you've been kind and we really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Have a good night. Cheers All to right. you, sir. Y'all too. Cheers. Thank you for listening. The tavern is closed for now, but we'd love to have you back for more fun next time. Seriously, though, get your asses out of here.